in this video, we'll be looking at about uh, research directions in cybersecurity, particularly um, what I do, really, right? So at UWA, uh, I try to look at uh, five main pillars or the focus areas in cybersecurity, starting with security modeling and analysis, um, adaptive and intelligent security, uh, secure software development, security education, and cybersecurity and justice, right? Let's have a look at each one and see what they are about. Well, firstly, um, security modeling analysis. We have seen this a little bit uh, in the uh, security management, things like the risk assessment. So that falls into this category. So basically what we're trying to do is be able to uh, measure, model, and analyze uh, different security postures associated with uh, different types of systems, okay? So as part of this research, we created some different models um, taking into account different limitations of uh, recent advances in um, the technologies. For example, the network uh, advanced into uh, cloud computing, um, software-defined networking, uh, Internet of Things, and each one comes with different challenges and we're trying to incorporate that, right? So, we created um, various extension, extended versions, um, things like THAM, TIHAM, TVHAM, etc. Uh, if you're interested, you can um, contact me or look up my publications. As an output, we also created some tools, so it kind of looks like this, all right. So when it comes to using models, um, we want to also provide users about uh, how to go about capturing different system uh, and network informations and uh, from there, we should be able to generate uh, automatically the models and evaluate. So we can construct models, um, display some metrics uh, in different formats, okay? as well as uh, providing raw data to uh, better understand, as well as giving like rankings, etc. Okay? So that's uh, um, what uh, security modeling and analysis uh, aspect is. And adaptive and intelligent security, um, this is still an ongoing um, field where it can be applied in various domains in, at the moment. So starting from the systems level to applications to networks and uh, a wider use. Okay, And this uh, pillar is focused on developing and applying intelligent and adaptive defense techniques. Uh, for example, we covered about moving target defense. Um, that's where, uh, and so this is where MTD kind of fits in. And combining with the modeling analysis pillar, you can also assess and evaluate the effectiveness of those techniques. Okay? And also trying to select optimal countermeasure strategies um, because you're not working with a single uh, state of systems or networks anymore it's going to continuously change and therefore your uh, security solution should uh, provide a global optimal solution and so for things like that we can compute. Okay. Uh, we also look at secure software development. Um, basically what we do nowadays is we don't build everything from scratch but try to utilize uh, existing libraries open source libraries as much as possible that already provides you the capabilities of doing stuff uh, but how often do you check how secure those libraries are or, or those modules that you import right so there are a lot of different system um, depend dependencies nowadays and this graph shows you one of the previous research that the vulnerabilities may not be apparent from um, your direct libraries, but because those libraries are chained when used, um, different vulnerabilities can be found in um, further down the further down the leaf nodes. Okay, so here uh, the red ones are highlighted where our severe vulnerabilities are found when our root node, the program that we created as different dependencies into uh, different libraries. Okay? So things like this we can look into and also identify, uh, okay, what kind of different security activities or modules that we can do during the software development to uh, minimize these uh, risks. Uh, 
So another one we look at is security education. Um, so if you remember your assignment doing CTF, uh, so it's it's good for a learning exercise, but also we can use that um, to understand better about how different security education approaches can be more effective or not. Okay, so it's all about trying to. Uh, enhance the interest of users in cybersecurity and to improve the engagement uh, with students. Okay, um, so not only the CTF, uh, we also built some simple games in the past and trying to analyze uh, how engaging that might be to different types of audiences. Okay, so this is also uh, one of the um, things that we look at. Last one, uh, I haven't really started on this, but uh, would like to look into it, is cybersecurity and justice. Uh, trying to understand how cybersecurity and law uh, can align together to to bridge the gap. Um, basically, law people may not fully understand what cybersecurity expert reports may look like or what they're indicating. The uh, same with the cybersecurity people may not fully understand what kind of evidence we need to provide to the law people for for it to be useful, uh, etc. Right. So we want to close the web. And this one is just an idea stage at the moment. Okay, so let's have a look at more concrete examples of what a current research looks like. So I'll describe four. Firstly, the rumor detection and generation. You probably use social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And you probably Notice often that um, some statements uh, you see may not ring a bell that is quite true. And you may be right, right? There's a lot of um, different information flowing around social media and due to its largeness and connectedness, um, the way information flows from one end to the other can be very rapid. And depending on what, what message it carries, it can be quite damaging, right? So. Uh, misinformation or rumor detection has been a quite popular topic um, for the past few years. Um, but still, there's a lot of work to do because we're dealing with natural language processing. Um, it's not quite easy to just say um, we created a model that can distinguish what rumor is. Because if you think about what rumors are, it's somebody saying some impactful statement that may or may not be true, and uh, things like that is often hard to, to hard to verify. So we're trying to create some uh, models that can pick those features up and classify it for some experts to look into further. Okay, um, and one of the project we did was that because uh, it is very difficult to come up with data sets for machine learning stuff, especially if you're using deep learning models, you need a huge amount of data sets. If you haven't done any AI stuff, you'll learn that later. And basically, what we want to do is, all right, why don't we create our own data set? Okay? Or, and at the same time, let's have a look whether, whether uh, our generated rumors are effective or not. What makes rumors a good rumor? Things like that. Right? So we've seen things like um, uh, our generated rumors are much easier to fool people than conventional written rumors or a poorly generated ones. Okay, and we also analyzed how the results may vary depending on the maturity of the topic. Things like uh, COVID-19 at this point of, point in time is quite well known now, so it is much harder to um, fool people with it. However. Uh, with the more recent topics like uh, Beirut explosion at the time of this uh, video, uh, people have much harder time trying to differentiate which what is true and what is not. Okay. Uh, next one. So hopefully you are all familiar with this particular um, format, um, the CTF, right? So we're trying to bring in some concepts of gamification into our learning, and. Hopefully, that created some uh, better engagement with you to uh, concentrate more. And obviously, we can gather, collect data, and analyze like uh, 
whether the point allocation for a particular question is adequate depending on, uh, say, percentage of solve, because percentage of solve uh, may indicate about how difficult the questions may actually have been uh, in comparison to uh, how much point the instructor uh, have assigned to it. So we can get a, a various insight into um, those, those assessments, I think, so we can use this uh, to better uh, construct our next and future assignments. Next one is um, adaptive malware variant generation using machine learning. Um, so you probably have an antivirus, right? One or two installed. Do you think that's enough? <laughs> right? We'll find out soon enough. But basically what we want to do is um, we give a bunch of existing malware samples. So we learned about like a polymorphic and metamorphic changes. So we're trying to mimic some of those changes uh, through machine learning. So uh, different instructions can be modified in different ways. Uh, so if you, are, if you forgot, you can go back to the malware video in week, uh, week three materials. Okay? And basically, we are applying that here and to see whether um, the existing uh, antivirus softwares are able to detect them on. Okay? Well, we found that there are different types of changes you can apply, but at the same time, those changes will have different uh, effectiveness. So if the graph chart here is higher, it means it's more effective. So based on different types you apply, uh, it can uh, differ in its effectiveness. And also we looked at uh, existing uh, anti-memory softwares and we tested against. So if you're using so things like Bitdefender, um, probably better, you're better off than using things like Avast or Trend Micro um, based on our results only, okay? So we're not saying those um, uh, tools are bad, but um, based on our exper experiments using our set of changes, which I will not share, found that if we do generate malwares that way, it's more um, effective against these type of um, or anti-malware softwares. So that's uh, another interesting area of research that we're doing. Another one is um, data-driven security for smart vehicles. So in this figure, you see uh, the values keep changing. Basically, this is the reading from what we call a CAN bus uh, from a smart vehicle. Okay, And these messages are ones that control the actions taken by cars, like accelerating, turning, indicating, uh, things like that. And unfortunately, because the smart vehicles now are able to be accessed via uh, internet, um, Wi-Fi or whatever, we can manipulate this information remotely as well. Okay? So we try to analyze um, how we can defend or detect such attacks um, through these. So we can apply uh, different, uh, detect different signals to analyze uh, what those signals indicate and what it means, and also create different models to uh, detect how well different models are effective against um, identifying and detecting uh, those intrusions. Okay. So I've shown you a few examples of what kind of research uh, that we do here at UWA related to cybersecurity. Um, the next question might be, okay, that looks cool, but why research? Well, it is to solve interesting problems we have today. Um, and by doing this research, you will become the expert in that particular area. So our students, the names you saw before, basically they have a very good idea about um, how those mechanisms work in that field they described, right? So they can use that um, for example, our rumor generators, they can probably use that to um, generate rumors, probably not a good idea. Anyway, <laughs> um, and compared to the malware generators, we can use that to further enhance um, anti antivirus or anti-malware products, etc. Right? Um, so through this, as you can see, you're not only developing like technical and analytical skills, but uh, you also develop like communication skills and learn the state of state of the art technology solutions. 
because you will have to communicate your findings with your peers and your other audiences and while doing that you will also have to uh, dig up what other people have done to understand what is the current state of the art and see how we can go about beating it okay and if you like you get to travel around the world to a lot of our phd students uh, often well used to <laughs> travel at least once a year to on overseas um, to attend conferences to present their research right so if you like that that's another perk that you can get out of uh, so hopefully uh, we can travel um, soon again okay so this video finishes here next item we'll be looking at reviewing the topics that we covered in this unit bye